John, who knows how long you've been doing this to me. Look, I'm filming you. When you go into the bathroom to talk to her, or even make a video call, I can't stand it. When John saw his wife crying inconsolably, he began to apologize. But he explained that the reason for her tears was not because of infidelity, but because he had to tell her something he had been hiding for a long time. And even after revealing this truth, he packed his things and left, leaving the woman very frightened and crying. Hear him out, Lisa said, without, it hurts me that you think I have someone else. Patricia had a short day at the office on Friday. As soon as the clock signaled the end of the workday, her colleagues grabbed their bags and hurried home. Patricia was held up by her computer. The old machine took a long time to shut down. As a result, the young woman was the last to leave the office. Her husband couldn't pick her up from work because his boss had scheduled an important evening meeting for Max to attend. The boss never made decisions without Mac. It was strange, but Max found a strange pleasure in it. Patricia decided not to call a cab and took the bus, leisurely strolling through the neighborhood. Because of this, she got home later than she had planned. On entering the apartment, Patricia smelled an unfamiliar odor in the hallway. She sniffed the air, and in a second, the odor was gone. As if it had never been there, Patricia looked around for some reason. Everything around her seemed normal. Nothing had changed. Even the large gold earrings accidentally left by the mirror were still in their place. Definitely not burglars, she said jokingly out loud. In time, she forgot about it. She took a leisurely shower, dried her hair, and went to heat up dinner. In the refrigerator, she noticed an empty package of sausages. Yesterday, it had been full. Now there were only five left. Patricia was surprised that her husband had chosen sausage instead of lasagna and crab salad for dinner when he got home. It wasn't like Mac and about, that it was his choice. Patricia set the table and sat down to eat. Max came home late and refused to eat. The meeting was at a restaurant, and he had eaten well there. His wife did not question him about the sausages. Throughout the next week, Patricia noticed small things indicating that someone had been in their apartment while they were away. Water droplets appeared in the bathroom that hadn't been there in the morning. Bottles on the shelves had changed position, and her hairbrush was found lying on the floor. The couple had gone out of town for the weekend and did not return until Sunday evening. Patricia began loading the clothes into the washing machine and found them wet. They hadn't been home for two days, but the drum looked like the laundry had just finished. Max, sometimes I feel like there's someone in our apartment when we're not here, Patricia said thoughtfully. How so? Her husband asked her. I don't know she answered. But I have a feeling. She told him about the strange things she had noticed in the apartment lately. Our spare keys are at my parents' house. Why would they drive across town to eat sausage and do laundry? They seem to have a working washing machine. Just weird, Patricia pondered. Perhaps Max agreed with her. She rubbed her forehead thoughtfully. Patricia, maybe you're just tired from work lately. Stress can have that effect on you, Max suggested. I don't know. Patricia waved her hand, but someone used the washing machine. Patricia, we used it, Max replied. But it would dry in two days, Patricia said. Max sighed. He would come home later than his wife and felt that nothing had changed in the apartment. Do you suspect my mom? He asked. Who else would it be? She left to visit her friends in another city three days ago. She can't physically use our washing machine, and her father even less, so he's more interested in watching TV than doing his own laundry or cooking. Patricia began to wonder again if her mother-in-law had really left. She couldn't have come. Her father-in-law sees no point in visiting the young couple at all, and not because he's a sensitive father. He just doesn't care how his youngest son is doing. 
He didn't care about his eldest either, but at least he could brag about his eldest, Peter. He has achieved great success in the capital, earns well, bought a new expensive car and owns a house. The father-in-law never tires of expressing his respect for Peter. As for Max, his father considers him a loser. No, Junior doesn't ask his parents for money. He is not unemployed. He has no bad habits or problems with the law. He never gave his parents any trouble, and he doesn't do it now. If they need help, they always call Max, and he never says no because he is close by in town. Max has a good job, a car, and repairs to his apartment. But his father does not consider the younger son's accomplishments worthy of attention. Moreover, the father believes that the younger one has achieved nothing. The next day, Patricia noticed that her hair conditioner was completely gone. She distinctly remembered that she had half a bottle left before she left. Max, did you take my conditioner? She asked her husband. No, he replied. You're looking for signs of green men again. Tell him I had half left, and now it's at the bottom. Patricia insisted. Max pulled away and looked irritably at his wife. Her quirks frightened him. He was sure there was no one in their apartment. That was simply impossible. If they're thieves, why aren't they taking anything of value? Shampoos and laundry detergent aren't the most valuable things in their apartment. If it's mom or dad, it's time to call a doctor. Why would two not-so-young people travel across town to take a bath at their son's house? Max couldn't find a reasonable explanation for it. He tried to talk to his mother, but she assured him that she never came to the apartment uninvited. His father was even more puzzled. I told you that women only bring trouble, he said. Learn from your brother. He is free and no one bothers him. Max waved his hand and left the room. He never got to have a proper conversation with his father. Soon Patricia realized what had happened to her air conditioner. She found marks on the tiles. Someone had spilled it and then wiped it off. Alex insisted it wasn't him. But if not him, then who? While Max pondered which doctor to see to help his wife, Patricia looked around the apartment anxiously. She felt very uncomfortable here. The young woman searched every square meter, scrutinizing every corner. Nothing of interest was found. Her paranoia seemed to be playing tricks on her. For a while, Patricia seemed to calm down, but a couple days later, she noticed another oddity. For example, there was a fingerprint on the hallway mirror, too big to be Patricia's or Max's. They both had neat fingers. Max, look at this. It's on the mirror. Now you're not going to argue with me. Clearly, it's neither yours nor mine, she said. Patricia, it could have been left by one of our friends. Max suggested it the last time we had guests. That was a month and a half ago. I cleaned a week ago. Honey, maybe we should see a doctor? Max asked on the way out. He looked her straight in the eye. Patricia realized he wasn't kidding. Do you think I'm crazy? She asked. No, but maybe you're having an obsessive thought. We have to do something about it, Max replied. I understand. The woman replied, offended. She was just sure she hadn't dreamed it. Patricia's husband didn't believe her. He referred her to a therapist who, after listening to her carefully, prescribed medication to calm her down. But Patricia didn't get better. She simply stopped sharing her observations with her husband. Instead, for days on end, a plan matured in her mind. She left work early, citing her husband's illness. Patricia returned home early, hoping to catch the intruder red-handed. But every time she turned the key in the lock, only a ringing void awaited her. The young woman wondered what was happening to her, coming home earlier than usual for the fourth time. She vowed that if everything was normal today, she would admit to being unwell. Patricia cautiously opened the door. There was water running in the bathroom. She glanced at the shoe rack. Max wasn't home yet. 
taking a step, Patricia suddenly noticed an unfamiliar pair of men's shoes. No, they definitely weren't her husband's shoes. And she wasn't being paranoid. There was a truth that had been kept from her for some reason, and now she was about to find out what it was. Patricia wanted to burst into the bathroom to take the intruder by surprise, but stopped herself in time that was better to wait for him in the room. It was unlikely that an armed criminal had broken in here to steal shampoo. Patricia sat down on the sofa in the living room and waited. After a few minutes, the noise of the water stopped. And it was quiet, as if the visitor were tiptoeing across the tiles. The young woman stood up, walked to the doorway, and listened. Inside, everything froze. Finally, someone opened the bathroom door ajar, and judging by the soft footsteps, stepped out into the hallway. Patricia breathed a sigh of relief and left the room. In the hallway, she almost ran into her husband's brother, Peter. Peter recoiled in fear, slipping slightly on the new laminate flooring. He was wearing an unfresh t-shirt and rather stylish pants. His wet hair stuck to his forehead. His eyes were filled with confusion. You, Patricia, he exclaimed. How did you end up here? She had only seen Peter a few times. Her husband's older brother lived in the capital and rarely visited the family. He was always busy solving some problem, spinning like a hot frying pan. Each visit was considered a holiday. His mother would flutter around, cooking delicacies and tidying up the apartment. Another revived and rushed to the store for good wine, which, however, Peter refused to drink. This time he offered his own. For some reason, they kept silent about the appearance of their favorite son. Patricia, I'll explain everything, said her husband's brother guiltily, lowering his eyes. Well, please try, she replied. I thought I was going crazy, and Max acted like he didn't know anything. He wasn't pretending. He really didn't know. No one but Mom knows I'm here, he added. Patricia scrutinized Peter's face during their brief interaction. What struck her most was his perpetually tired look. It seemed that the sparks in this man's soul had long since been extinguished. His eyes seemed empty, his smile forced. Patricia wondered why his parents didn't notice or pretended not to. Why all the secrecy, Patricia asked. Did mom give you the keys? Yes. He confirmed, I couldn't go to them if you didn't want to live with them. Why couldn't you just ask us to take you in? I don't understand. I'll tell you. But promise me that Dad and Max won't find out. Are you hiding from someone? The debt collectors? Patricia tried to guess. I don't owe anyone anything. Peter told Patricia that for several years, his business had barely made any money even though he had taken out substantial loans to grow it, but nothing was changing. One day, everything finally collapsed. He had to close the company and urgently sell the assets to pay off the banks. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for my vanity, I wouldn't be in this mess. I should have cut costs, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to take a step back. It would mean admitting that I couldn't handle it, that I was weak, he explained. Well, yes. After all, in our eyes, you never lose, replied Patricia. Peter grinned. Well, I couldn't imagine myself as a loser in front of my friends, father and brother. Really? Patricia raised her eyebrows angrily. You risked everything just so someone wouldn't think you were weak. The bad news is, you never have and never will have any friends. Maybe I certainly don't have any now replied Peter. Still, even big companies face crises. The most successful companies find themselves on the verge of bankruptcy, and it's okay to take a step back. Work on your mistakes. What's so shameful about that? I know, but I couldn't do it, replied Peter irritably. It's easier for me to pretend that everything is all right, simply because it can't be otherwise. Your crown isn't tight, mister. I do everything perfectly, 
Patricia said wryly. It's not tight, Peter admitted and seemed a little offended by those words. So what now? Are you going to eat my sausages in secret? The young woman asked. Peter replied, but I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed to go to my father and brother and admit that I screwed up. Isn't it embarrassing to sneak into your brother's apartment? Yes, it was. Peter sighed. I'm ashamed of the situation I'm in, but I still can't look my father in the eye. He's so proud of me, and I'm not what he thinks. I've never been successful. Smart, lucky. I've always had business problems. I'm up to my eyeballs in debt, constantly maneuvering, jumping from one loan to another just to keep my appearance stable and not become a black sheep. If my father found out I'd lost everything and was going to work for someone else, it would be a shame. I don't understand. Patricia shook her head. Are you really willing to change your whole life just to please your father? No, that's not it. Peter shook his head. My mother will accept me no matter what, but my father wants me to conform to her. To what end? Patricia inquired. Maybe I don't know, and you are heirs to some great noble family and can't dishonor the family name. Patricia felt a wave of irritation, knowing everything about the brothers' childhood and their relationship with their father. She sincerely wondered why the eldest had such a reverent attitude towards this man. Peter brushed it off loudly. We are a simple family. We always lived in poverty. My father never achieved anything or even tried. He went to work and didn't take extra shifts. He worked from start to finish. The family's plight didn't bother him. Mom took part-time jobs, and he watched TV and read books. Anything didn't help us with anything, but he always laughed when we failed at some. My friends taught me how to ride a bicycle. I hoped he would praise me for learning something on my own, but when I demonstrated my skills, he just laughed. He said I was bicycling like a little girl. I know the stories, Patricia shrugged, and I don't understand why you're so afraid of his judgment. You've already accomplished more than he had. I mean, you've lost it all. I live in the cheapest apartment. I don't even have a washing machine. I live on my mom's money. I still haven't found a job. I came back to town with one suitcase. It contained only the remnants of former luxuries. Among those remnants was a terrible perfume. Like, I could smell it in the hallway. Peter laughed. Really? Yes, Patricia replied. I was silent for a moment. Patricia was still under the impression of what she had heard. She wanted to help Peter, but in this situation, he could only help himself. Max, why don't you want to tell the truth? He could help you find a job. Patricia asked sincerely, turning to her younger brother for help. No, I can't but you can sneak into someone else's apartment. Patricia felt herself getting angry. Stop it. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. But if I confess to Matt, it'll turn out he was right. About what? About everything. About the way I should live my life. About the wrong things in my life. Oh my God, Patricia exclaimed, rolling her eyes. I envy him, Peter admitted. I've been blinding myself for years because of my stubborn conceit and vanity. I've lost everything I had, and now I stand in the hallway of my little brother's apartment and realize that I had nothing of value, only dust. Peter fell silent for a meaningful pause. Please don't tell Max I'm back. I was ready to install cameras in the apartment. I suspected Max had a mistress. I even saw a therapist cured my neurosis, and now that it's all cleared up, you're asking me not to tell him the truth. No, I'll tell him all about you and your mom's brilliant idea to give the keys to our apartment to whomever she wants. Peter got angry this time. I knew you were like this. Like what? Patricia crossed her arms and looked sternly at her son-in-law. I hope Max can set you straight, she said. You'll stop playing the elusive guest and start living a normal life. Yes, starting over is hard, 
but it's better than dwelling on your mistake. There's no point in hiding. You can't hide from yourself. While the two brothers were talking, Patricia noticed that Max kept studying Peter's face, but he couldn't find anything. He kept talking and then looking again, but no, Max didn't laugh at him, didn't say hurtful words, or try to humiliate him. If you want, live with us, he offered. Patricia didn't mind. As soon as you find a job, you can move out. Really? Absolutely. Max nodded. What did you expect? That I'd shame you, Peter. I thought you were going to judge me, Peter admitted, just for driving my wife crazy. I really thought she was developing mania because of you, his brother replied. I'm sorry, he said, looking down. By the way, you have a great wife. She's wise, but my father's bound to say I'm a loser. Let him say it, Max shrugged. He says it to me regularly. So what? Should I stop living now? For how long? I thought you were a loser, especially when you came home after studying in the capital. I truly didn't understand how a person could take such a step backwards. But then I saw you and realized that I even envied you. Max smiled for the first time in many years. They spoke sincerely to each other. Peter did not boast, did not try to jab, did not interrupt and did not argue. His father took the news of his son's return with his usual coldness. Through a few sharp remarks, added a couple of hurtful words, he said he was disappointed and went back to watching TV. In conversations with friends, he no longer brags about his older son. He recalls how the younger one worked at the cottage. Max from a loser gradually turned. Peter found a job rented an apartment, and moved out of his younger brother. Gradually, he stopped lamenting the lost status, as well as the fact that his father no longer considers him successful. He no longer lives someone else's. Peter is now absolutely certain that everything around him is his happiness, his success, his choice. There are more important things in the world than status, wallet size, and the opinion of others. The main thing is to realize this before trying to sneak into his brother's apartment to take a shot. If you like the stories on our channel, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and put a bell to be the first listeners of another new story. Good luck and come back. It will be interesting.